Welcome back, board members. The boardroom is once again open, and tonight we're going to dig through the lost ruins of Arnak. It is pretty much set up here. I just have to shuffle some of these idle tokens and replace this from my earlier play that uh, was learning how to play it, and I lost to the AI player by three points, so I'm not going to repeat that. Well, maybe I'll repeat that, but we'll find out. Okay. The spaces are all ready. This gets a face down and a face up. Face down and a face up. Face down, face up. Face down, face up. And the rest get face up. Now this is set up for two player and solo mode variant. So the solo mode variant is the um, AI player uses these little Toke, or these little cards here, they're going to depict what actions the AI player takes. It's the rival player is what they're called, and it is every other archaeologist against me. Don't know how that's fair, but that's the way life is in the ruins of Arnak. I start the game with one compass token and one coin. Uh, the rival player always g goes first. Also, not very fair, but also the way it goes. Anytime the rival takes a research action. They get to discard the top um, assistant here off the stack. Also not very fair. We've got the relics here on this side of the moon staff and the items that side of the moon staff. Research track allows you to get to the top of the temple and get a lot of bonus points. And these are the new dig sites to find. These are the current dig sites to excavate. And that is the quickest rundown you'll probably ever get Lost Ruins of Arnak. So let's just begin. We've got this little handy cam here. This shows that the rival player is going to defeat, uh, defeat a guardian, but there is no guardian on the board. When there is no guardian, they get to research instead. So they're going to kick it off by researching the path to the right. The back of all of the tiles have an arrow left or right. And so whatever's on the top of the stack, that's the direction they go. So they're going to research here and, of course, discard the highest. So that's this one on the stack. Okay. Then it will be my turn. I get to draw five cards and I get to play one card, maybe buy a card or buy an artifact. Or I can go to a dig site or I can find a new site. Um, or I can research if I have the resources, which at the start of the game, I don't have the resources to do that. I think I need to go to dig sites. Learning what I learned last game, I was really short on tablets. I was really short on uh, arrowheads. Not so much. I was doing okay on, on, the, on the gems. So I'm going to spend this card here, funding. It has one movement icon, and I generate for free one coin. I spend that movement icon to go to any of these locations and take the desired action. I'm going to go here and get two tablets. That's my turn. Now it is rival's turn. So they're going to block any space that gives a coin. So that's what they're doing. They don't generate resources and they don't pay resources. They just block resources from me. Pretty jerkish move, if you ask me. Since I got my fear cards, which I'll show you here in a moment, I'm going to spend this card here to generate a free compass token and use that movement icon to take this space, which says, play, play any card, don't get its effect, but generate one gem. So I'm going to play the fear card, no effect, and generate one gem. Now that's all of my archaeologists, so I don't have any more workers to deploy on spaces. That doesn't mean your turn is up. You still have some more things you can do, and I'll show you when it's my turn. The rival, aha, I beat the rival to it this time. They would block spaces that give a gem, but there isn't one, so they do nothing. I'm one step ahead of you, rival. Okay, so what can you do on a turn if you don't have workers? Well, I have two coins and two exploration tokens. I could buy this. I could pay my gem and go up this track with my 
magnifying glass. If you have a magnifying glass in a notebook, the notebook can never pass your uh, magnifying glass. So actually, no, I'd pay a gem to go up this track. Um, and then when you go up a track, you have to keep going there. So if I go to the right, I have to stay to the right until they combine, and then I can go left, center, right, and, and so on. So you got to kind of follow that path. And I think that's what I want to do is start to go up the research track, maybe. If I buy this card, it goes to the bottom of my deck. It allows me to thin out my deck by exiling a card and generate a tablet every time I play it. That's the only, I guess this card here generates good two movement icons and two free coins. You know, I think I, I can always do that, so I will do that. I will pay one coin to buy this card. And when you buy a card in this game, it actually goes to the bottom of your deck. Instead of like a normal deck builder, it goes to your discard pile. This one ensures that it's going to come up in your next hand, if not your following hand after that. But that's my entire turn, was buying a card. What happens here is you shift all the cards towards this arrow and refill it. So... That one is similar, but it generates two compass tokens. Okay, Arrival. Arrival is going to... Looks like they're going to research and discard the top most. Okay, the research again, and the highest one now is this one. Again, they don't make use of this stuff. They just make sure I can't have it. Um... I'm going to go ahead and research by paying, you know, should I wait? Maybe I should wait until I get a, an arrowhead. So I'm just going to play this exploration basic card just to generate one compass token for a future turn. Rival player, a block, tablet space. Well, I already took care of that. So they don't get to do that. Uh, all I have left is a fear card. It doesn't do anything. Um, I really feel like I'd, I don't think I should pass. I think I should do something if I have. But I don't have enough compass points to buy this treasure chest. Okay, well, I'm not going to pass. I think that's a bad idea. You only get so many actions in this game. I'm going to go ahead and pay my gem to research this side. Oh, when they got here, they discarded this bonus tile too, because they beat me to it. Uh, even though they did that, I want to start researching. So when you move your magnifying glass, you get the magnifying glass bonus. When you move your notebook, you get the notebook bonus. So I get one coin for doing this. Rival player. Oh, it gets exciting now. Rival player is going to find a new dig site. And with that dig site comes a guardian. And it's the far left dig site. So take one of their workers, far left dig site. It's whatever is here. They're going to remove this token, populate the dig site, and a guardian will show up. Just like so. Nothing happens as a result of that. This just shows you need three tablets to defeat that guardian. Then you can use its guardian bonus later in the game. But as a result of that, nothing happens. I don't have anything else I can want to do. I only have two coins. I could, I could buy this. Buy it. I don't want to take, I don't want to pass if I can do something. Paying two coins to buy this card. These slide down. And some sturdy boots show up. Rival's turn. Arrival is going to block a space with arrowheads. So that's here. Again, the, the rival uses every other color that you're not using. So they are blue, green, and yellow in this game. I think I'm pretty much out of actions now. I only have three compass tokens and two tablets, and I don't see anything I can buy with that. So I have to pass. That's it for my turn. The rival gets to finish all of their actions. So I might as well leave that camera up. They're going to buy the cheapest artifact. So it's the, only, it's the only one. Oh, which is a bummer because I could maybe afford this artifact, which I can, but it's too late. I already passed. Rival continues their turn by blocking compass spaces. 
Rival finishes their turn by purchasing the cheapest item. Cheapest item is the Sturdy Boots. It's replaced here. That's the end of the round. Everybody gets their archaeologists back. Yes, you get your army of archaeologists. Rival. Okay. Um, what else happens? Oh, we have to discard these cards next to the moon staff. Then it goes to round two. Then we refill. So this is already full. So now we have two artifacts and four items. And the, and the, the moon staff will keep going and they'll get more artifacts and less items. It's kind of interesting that way. I shuffle my cards. And then the cards you played, like, will be a discard pile, go on the bottom of your deck, and then you draw five. And that's how you know you're getting those cards you bought last round. And those are the cards I use for round two. Okay. Uh, the, uh, um, the rival player always goes first. Let me make sure I did everything at the end of the round. Yep, 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 yep. Card row, bottom of your deck, that, that. Everything's right. Okay. Shuffling the rival deck. These were the arrows I was saying right or left. You know that you keep the dark side toward the bottom. That's how you know you have them sorted to where it's half one way and half the other. Give those a good shuffle and see what, how the rival screws me at the beginning of round two. First, they're taking away my ability to get coins. So they will go on the coin space. That's okay. I've got some good cards in here. Um, but I think the first thing I need to do is play the funding, because I have a plan in mind. Play the funding card here to get one coin, and it has one movement symbol. I'm going to go get this arrowhead and generate my coin for free. When you play a card, you either get to use the movement or the ability. But when there's a lightning bolt, the ability is always free. But that's my turn. The rival is going to purchase the cheapest item. Cheapest item now is the bear trap. Bear trap. And it refills with a journal. Okay. Now I'm going to, I'm going to play the torch. The torch, I get no movement because I'm using its ability. I can exile a card from my hand or my play area. Hmm. I'll exile it from my hand, get rid of my fear card, which is a minus one victory point card, and then generate a tablet. That's my turn. Rival player. It's round two. So they just, let me take a closer look at this one. So all they do is find a new level one excavation site, but doesn't spawn a guardian. So the farthest right, so this one this time, takes away that idol, gives them points for that. Level one, but no guardian. So what these are are extra action spaces, um, which now that I look at that one, it's pretty darn good. I think I should actually go there. And I will. Play exploration. No. Okay, got to show you this. This has a boat icon for movement. This requires a buggy icon, which I don't have in my hand. Well, shoot. That is a dilemma. I can't go there. Maybe I should go to a new site. Yes, I will. I don't have a buggy icon. Wanted to go to this one. I guess I could go to this one. Or I could go all the way up to one of these tougher ones. Let's do that. 
pan for gold. It gives me two boat icons, which I can go to... Oh, I don't have six exploration tokens to do that, though. It costs exploration tokens and movement. I guess I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay. Um, my plans are thwarted before I plan them. All right, I like that. I'm going to play this exploration as one movement, and I generate a compass token. I'm going to go to this spot. No. I'm going to go to, you know, I'm going to go here and generate two more compasses. I'm going to try something. All right, rival. Block the arrowhead space. Ah, but I'm already there. Okay, now I can go up there. Two boat icons. I get two gold for free because of the lightning bolt. It costs six exploration tokens, compass tokens. I have six, exactly. All right. So, here's what happens. I get either, either one of these I can go to, and it's a level two action space. So I'll just go to this one. They're the same face up icon, so not worried about it. I get both of these idols. This gives me a tablet right away. The other idol stays face down. I don't get its ability. But, oh wait, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't have. Another archaeologist. Awful. Okay. So I'll just play the... I get my... Six exploration compass tokens back. Oh, man. I get the two gold anyway for playing that card. And that playing that card will just be my turn. The rival player... I'm going to block compass spaces. I keep forgetting you only have two archaeologists in this game. Then you have to manage your resources. Um, what do I want to do here? I have the spearhead. Well, I have enough Exploration tokens to take one of these. The Pathfinder staff says relocate a placed archaeologist to a campsite or level one site and activate it. Um, so, for example, I could move one of my guys to this site and activate it. Oh, yes. I'm going to pay four. For this artifact. And when you buy an artifact, you get to use its ability the turn you buy it. So I'm going to relocate a placed archaeologist to a level 1 site or another campsite and activate it. I'm going to activate it by gaining another compass. And then gaining a gem. And then gaining a fear card, though. Fear card goes on the bottom of my deck, I believe. That's my turn but it's going to be really good here in a minute. Rival is going to research and take the top so they're all even, so it's the far right one again. Killing me, Rival. Killing me on the research track again. Okay, I'm going to uh, defeat a guardian. This one requires three tablets. I have three tablets. I now get what's called a Guardian's Boon. At any time during the game, I can activate this ability, generating one aerial movement point, which is like the highest tier. There's airplane, then there's ships and cars, then there's boots. That's the hierarchy. So I can use this boon and flip this over to show that I've used it. All right. It's worth five points at the end of the game also, so that's a good thing. So that was my turn there. The rival. Haha! -ha. Defeat a guardian. There isn't one. 
Uh, if not, then they research moving to the far right. So they are taking this and discarding it. Taking all the good stuff again. I don't know how I would ever catch up to them on that, on that board. I will spend this gem to research with my... No, I keep thinking... It's that. I don't want to spend the gem. I want to spend the compass, compass and the arrowhead to go here, which gives me uh, my choice of these. And I'm going to choose this worker that lets me draw another card and then play a card. Is it draw a card and play a card without its effect or draw a card and play a card? Use up a card. It goes from your hand to your play area, but you ignore its travel value and effect. Yes. So basically, I'm drawing a card and discarding a card to a certain degree when I use that. And it's free. I don't have any other cards in my hand, so I would actually be drawing this top one and discarding it, and I don't want to do that. Oh, maybe I do. It could be the fear card. Sure, why not? It's not. It was an exploration card. So he's used up for the round. And that's a free play action. The rival is going to block tablet space, which is already blocked. How was that already blocked? Oh, did I move? Must have gone the wrong spot. Should be blocking gold. He is. Spears. I was there. Compass. Okay, so it should have been on the compass earlier. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, that's where the rival is. My turn. Uh, I will pay the gem. No, I can't. My notebook can never go farther than the magnifying glass. Always forgetting that, too. Okay, looks like my turn. I have two. This should have refilled. I have two exploration compass tokens, and I have three gold coins. Automobile is really good for movement, so I'll do it. Yes, paying three gold coins for the automobile. It was in the bottom of my deck. Rival player going to purchase the cheapest artifact. Uh, they're equal, so it's the far right according to their tiebreaker. I am out of actions that I can do. Yep. Rival, last action. Block the gem space. Right there. So now, we bring back archaeologists. Oops, this would have refilled. Bring back my archaeologists. Discard these two. This slides over. Man, these spinning cards are probably driving OCD people crazy. Then these slide down. It never stays straight. Never. Never, ever. Okay, those slide down. Um, shuffle my used cards, and they go into the bottom of my deck. Like so. I draw five for the next round. Is that it? Looks like it. Shuffle the rival's action cards. And find out what they do. First thing is they start by blocking the spearhead space. They knew I wanted them. Somebody in my camp talked. I can feel it. I can feel it, feel it, feel it. Okay. I'm going to start by using my assistant here. Exhaust it to draw a card. And then play a card without its effect. And that would be fear. So that's a free action. Question is, what do I want to do on my turn? 
What do I need? Oh, okay. I need to fund. I'm going to do funding. It's one free gold coin and it has one movement. I'm going to use that movement to get two explore tokens. Okay. Let's take that. Rival, going to block the gold space. Fine. I am going to play. Oh, I'm excited now. Automobile. Um. It has two uh, buggy movement and also get, generates two compass tokens for free. I'm going to use it to excavate a new site. So first I get two compass tokens. That gives me six. Spending all six to excavate something up here. I have two buggy tokens. I can take these two for the coin or this to exile a card. I will do this side here. So we'll put this one back. And it puts my worker here. I get to exile a card for that idol's ability, and I'm going to exile this other fear that's in my hand. And then I also get to activate it here. It's a coin, a compass, tablet, and a spearhead, arrowhead. That's amazing. Um, however, when you take the idols, a guardian shows up. If I don't defeat this guardian, at the, by the end of the round, when I come back from a space that has a guardian, I will take another fear card. But I will defeat that guardian, so there's that. Okay. Rival. No. Uh, rival defeats a guardian if they're at a guardian space, I believe. I'm going to double check that one. I don't think they get to defeat my guardian where I'm located. I think they have to be located there. Um... Right. If there's a guardian on a site occupied by your rival, then they can overcome the guardian, but it's not. So they research instead the far right space. Oh, I guess it's this one. Um, and that's it. They don't take away the top because it's not the icon isn't on there. I think I was doing that maybe one too many times. Not to too much detriment to the game, but I was more my detriment than anything else. Okay. Um, I will defeat the Guardian. It requires an airplane and an arrowhead. So I'm going to play my Pathfinder Staff, which gives me one airplane for movement. So I can't use the bottom of it. I'm using it for movement, and I also have to discard my arrowhead. But I defeated this Guardian. You know... Actually, I will keep, I just realized this, I have the boon from my previous monster that I defeated has an airplane icon. So I'll keep this card in my hand and flip this over and use it. Still defeating this. I think that's better. All right, rival. I'm for you to buy the cheapest item. It, they're all the same, so you do the far right, which is the brush. Refills with an aeroplane. Okay. I have a couple of cards in my hand. I need... I need an arrow. So, on my player board, there are these four slots. Let's see if I can pull this off without dumping my stuff. Okay, I guess not. These four spots, one, two, three, four. I can put relics or my idols up in those spots, but then they will cover these victory points. But if I do take that spot, I get any one of these free um, actions. So, oops, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I need an arrowhead pretty bad. Need an arrowhead pretty bad to start moving up that track some more. So let's do it. 
I'll cover up my first space to generate an arrowhead. That's free. I'm going to use the arrowhead in the tablet. Yes. To move here, which gives me one compass token. By the way, that's the victory points I'll receive at the end of the game, depending on where my magnifying glass is. All right. The rival is going to cover up the tablet space. Okay. I see you. How can I get another tablet? I could cover that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to cover my second idle space, so now... I just gave, gave away three points to get two tablets. It's for free. I'm going to spend a tablet to activate my artifact. So when you buy an artifact, you get to do it for free when it comes into play. But then when you play it later, you have to pay this tablet cost to use its ability. Relocate a placed archaeologist to a tent or a level one dig site. So I spend the tablet. Relocate this worker, what are they doing? Oh, to this site, to generate a gold and two tablets. Okay, rival. Over up compass, I already did that. So you can't have that space. Okay. Um, What kind of items are there? The journal's not bad. Um, Serpent Idol generates a fear card and a gem. Gems are really decent later game. So why not? Let's do that. I'll pay two explore tokens, compass tokens. I'm going to buy the serpent idol. And I get a gem and a fear card. And I'm going to use my other boon from the other monster I defeated to exile a card right now and just get rid of it as a free action. OK. Rival. Going to research to the right. Lose this token, and they're going to take the topmost again, which is this one is the highest. Uh, there's no way I'm catching up to that. I don't think. I don't see it anyway. I will, however, spend... Oh, it's this. Shifts. I will spend one of the gems I just got to move the notebook forward, giving me a free compass token, and... I get another assistant. This, one's let me, this one lets me trade. This one generates tablets. This one... Oh, buy something at minus one cost. Kind of nice. I think I want to do the trade one. I'm going to do it right now. Trade a tablet. So you trade up. So you trade tablets in for arrowheads, arrowheads in for gems. Okay. Rival. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Rival is buying the cheapest artifact, which is this one. They're just going into a stack for the rival to add victory points later in the game. It's crazy. Okay. Um, my turn. I am now going to pay an arrowhead and two tablets. to move my research token. Magnifying glass here. I get one compass. Now if I move my notebook here, I turn my rivals o or my allies over and they have a better side on the back. Um, that was my action. The rival's action is going to be, this is round three, so they're going to excavate a new site with a guardian, level one. They always go to the bottom row first, and it's going to be the farthest right, so it's this one. They're going to take this relic, or idol, and it's going to be this site 
with this person and this guardian. That was their action. I'm going to just pan for gold. Gives me two gold. Rival's action is to block the gem spot, the gem spot which is here. I can buy a card. Oh boy, that's really good. Um, the airplane is really good. I think though, I think I'm gonna buy the journal for three gold. Yes. One, two, three. Buy the journal. It's on the bottom of my deck. This refills. Rival is out of actions. Am I out of actions? Mm, looks like I'm out of actions. So rival discs come home, or rival archaeologists come home. My archaeologists come home. These cards get destroyed. Who's on the fourth round? These slide down. These show up. That's that. I shuffle these. The bottom of the deck they go, and we go to the fourth round. So again, unlike other deck builders, the cards you play get shuffled, and then they go to the bottom of your deck, ensuring that the new stuff gets there sooner, which I love that. I wish other deck builders did that. Three, four, five cards for my next round. Shuffle the jerks, uh, rival abilities. and see what they do first. First one says, they defeat a guardian if they're on a guardian space. If they're not on a guardian space, they advance their researcher. Uh, to the right, this one. Then, my turn. Uh, my plan, I had a plan, what was the plan? Oh yes, plan. First, I get to ready my assistance. My plan was to play the journal I just bought. This journal says, exile this card to research your notebook for free. Um, yes, please. Notebook goes here for free. When it arrives, I get to upgrade one of my assistants. I'm going to upgrade this one. So now his ability is just draw a card. I don't lose a card for drawing one. I'm going to exhaust him to draw a card right now. And that ends my turn. Now the rival. The rival is going to block the tablet space. So no tablets for me. I'm going to, it's kind of, once you have an idea, it gets kind of easy to figure out the, the path you want to take. Um, that is, this takes a gold, a tablet, and an arrow I don't have. Um, that takes a tablet and a ruby I don't have. So clearly I need a tablet, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to play the torch. I may... I may exile a card in my hand. I'll just exile this exploration card, one of my starter cards, to generate a tablet. And it's Arrival's turn. <clears throat> ah, blocking the exploration space. Okay. Now the reason I got that tablet so I can move my magnifying glass by paying a tablet and a gem to go here. And I get to exile a card from my hand. Um, sure, I will exile this exploration card as well. Okay. Rival's gonna block the gold space.
I'm going to use the automobile. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm not. Um, I'm going to use the funding. I'm going to get a coin. And use the movement to go here and get an arrowhead. Okay. Then I'm going to use my assistance ability to upgrade an arrowhead into a gem. Rival's turn. Purchase the cheapest artifact. Three, this one. Okay. What do I need to do here? I think what I need to do... Oh, that's a really good one. Use the two movement on this automobile and get two exploration tokens. Two exploration tokens, two automobile tokens, or two automobile movement to go here. I get a coin and a compass, coin, compass, tablet, arrowhead. I think that's a pretty good move. Um, rival. Okay, this is round four. They're going to I'll take this out. They're going to discover a level two site. And it's going to be on the far right, so it's going to be this one. They're taking both of these away. Tablet. Oh, they are smoking me on those points. Okay. And it is here. But no guardian showed up, so that's okay. I'm grateful for that because they don't get to take the guardian. Okay. I have a coin and a gem. Gem. Coin, moving here, I get a compass token. It is the rival's turn. Blocking the gem space. We like to do that. It is my turn. I am out of cards. Uh, I have a lot of compass tokens. Let's see if there's... Ooh, the star charts say pay a coin to activate any two different sites here. That is gigantic. It doesn't say unoccupied. Boy, that's really, really good. Any two sites here, what would I do? I would do tablets, of course. Tablets and spearhead? Tablets and coins. Hmm. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to buy well, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, I'm not going to buy that. Spearhead that. Oh! Spearhead, coin, and tablet. Spearhead, tablet, coin. Spearhead, tablet, coin. Going here. What are you? <gasps> Draw a card. Okay, that was my turn. Rival's turn. Going to advance again. They make it to the top spot before me. And they discard the furthest right. These are tied, so this one... I have one card left, doesn't do me much. Um, I just generate one coin with it. Rival's turn. Going to buy the cheapest item, which is this that I really kind of wanted. Hot air balloon. I still really want the ostrich, but I haven't seen it come up yet. The good old dog. There's a chew toy. Uh, that was Rival. Me. I have compass tokens. And what does the dog do? Activate an unoccupied... Tent site. Oh. Okay. Three coins. I'll buy me a dog. Goes on the bottom of my 
deck. Refills here. Oh, lantern, activate any campsite. I'm gonna block the spearhead site, but it's already taken, so the rival doesn't get to do anything. I think I'm out of stuff to do. Yes. So, what I'm gonna do is reset for the final round. My guy's back. These archaeologists back. That's all the archaeologists. Uh, this card goes away. This slides down. This card goes away. These slide down. Now it's almost all artifacts and only one item left. Uh, that all moved. I shuffle these and put them at the bottom of my deck. I reset these. It's interesting that you only like shuffling four and five cards at a time from your turn. One, two, three, four, five. Last round. Shuffling the rivals. Okay, rival. Let's do this. First thing there... Oh, I should probably show you at home. Blocking the compass spot. What is my plan here? Um, oh, I moved up to another gold. This person should also be upgraded. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was I bought the dog. That's going to be great. That is going to be great. I don't have any tablets. I'm going to play the dog and get some tablets. Dog. Activate any unoccupied um, tent site. And get a compass token. Or do I have to pay a compass token? I don't think I pay a compass token for that. I'm going to activate the tablet site and get two tablets. Is that right? I feel like it's right. Okay, uh, uh, rival, L uh, number five, so I'll show this on the big screen here, does nothing. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is it worth it? Tablet and a ruby. Yes, it's worth it. Gold pan. Has two movement, two boat movement, and I get two gold. Two gold. Two boat movement I'm going to use to go to this site to generate a card. Tablet. And a gem. Oh yeah. Got it going now. The rival is going to defeat a guardian if he's out of space. He's not out of space, so it's going to level up here research-wise, on the far right, so takes away this one. I'm now going to research also by spending a gem and an explore compass token. Two things happen. I get this, whatever that is. Oh, I get a free upgrade. Okay, great. I will upgrade my tablet to an arrowhead. And then I also get to draw a card, because that's the ability of that. The rival is going to block the gold space. Ooh. Should I, should I excavate a new site? One, two, three, four, five, six. What do I have? I have it to do it right now. Hmm. First thing I'm going to do is draw another card. Didn't help me. <laughs> um, next thing I want to do is...
campsite or that and activate it. I think that's is that better. Yes. Okay, I'll play my Pathfinder staff, activating it with a tablet. Relocate a placed person to a tent site or one of these sites and activate it. I'm going to go here. And I get a coin and an arrowhead. And that will be that will be that. Rival's turn is going to advance again, taking another. This is going to be the far left side of this one. Wow. It's gonna be a lot of points for them. I'm going to Upgrade. Yes, perfect. Upgrade my arrowhead to a gem for free, and it also generates a compass. Then I'm going to defeat this guardian. It costs a boot movement and a gem. Here's a gem, and this fear card has a boot movement. Okay. The rival, going to block that arrowhead space. I'm going to use the automobile. Generates two explore tokens and two car movement. Put my archeologist there, which generates a coin, a compass, an arrowhead, and a tablet. That is the rival's turn, blocking the tablet space. They do it so well. I'm going to I'm going to move up on the track. It's one arrow, one tablet one coin. I get a compass. Oh, if I only had one gem. Oh, I'll have a gem. Rival's turn. Blocking the gem spot. They thought I needed a gem. They didn't realize I had a serpent idol. So cost a tablet. I get another fear card, unfortunately. But I do generate a gem. Rival's turn. They're going to buy the lowest cost artifact, which is this one. My turn. Spending the gem, a compass, and a coin to advance to this space. Oh, nice. Okay, great. Rival's turn. Buying the cheapest item. That's their last turn, and it's the only item. Okay. Now, if I want to buy this, it costs a gem. If I want to buy this, it costs a compass and a spearhead. Um, I think I'll do that. Compass and a spearhead. And knock everything over. That's not a compass, that's a gold. Compass and a spearhead to buy this. Rival is out of actions. I am not. I'm going to play this for a coin. I'm going to play this for a coin, because pretty much the rival's out of actions. I can just I get to just keep playing. But I, I'm gonna be out of actions here shortly. Uh, I'm gonna pay two coins to buy this card.
coins do nothing for me at the end of the game. So then I'm going to pay two coins to buy this card. Then I'm going to spend three exploration tokens. <gasps> wow, that's nice. I should have really planned this out a little more, but that's okay. Stone key. I'm going to buy this. Artifact is used right away. Move one of my idols that's in one of my slots back down to my crate. So I get those points back for it. Which also means I could use it to generate a freebie. Good to know. All right. I have three more I can spend to buy an artifact. I'm going to buy this artifact, which is gain two gold. Use the effect on the silver side of one of the available people on the supply board. Um, yes. I will use this one to get rid of this fear card. I have enough fear in my deck as it is. These shift down. I have three left to spend. <laughs> okay, I'll do Ancient Wine. Use the effect of the gold side. I will use this one to get three coins. One, two, three. Um, I will spend my idol to put it back up top to spend a coin to generate a gem. Spend the gem here to purchase this. Spend two coins on this card. And I am out of coins, cards, and fun stuff to do. So let's add this up, shall we? My notebook and magnifying glass. Notebook is four points, magnifying glass is 21 points. So that's gonna be a total of 25. My bonus temple points, I got two of those two pointers for four points. My idols, three, six, 10, 13 points. Guardians, I have 15 points. I destroyed three guardians. My items and artifacts, this is where I'm going to get a lot of points. Because I was able to really, really run this kind of economy machine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. That's a fear card, 16, uh, 18. 18 for that, minus one fear card. My total is 29, 32, 42, 52, 57, 67, 75, 74. Rival. Their points here are 23. But their points there is 8 for the extra temple tiles. Their relics, though, or their, their idle points, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. They have no guardians. Their items and artifacts are two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, sixteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 16. Of course, no fear cards. So their points are 31, 46, 52, 62. I beat them 74 to 62 on my second try. Now it's time to turn up the difficulty meter just by one and see what happens next game. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're watching live, I do appreciate it. If you're checking out the YouTube edited replay, replay enjoy the fact that the turns are cut down to right when I take my action. As always, like this video for me, subscribe, comment if you have any questions on the game, 
Uh, have you played this game? Do you like this game? I like this game. Um, and again, as always, we'll see you at the next boardroom meeting.